Damian Gisbergen has officially completed his first NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Darlington Raceway and finishes inside the top 15 in 15th place. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to your video. As I just said a second ago, Shane Van Gisbergen has completed his first NASCAR Top Tier Series race at Darlington Raceway and finishes in 15th. At the start of the race, Shane Van Gisbergen qualified in 17th position, but actually didn't qualify there because there was no practice in qualifying yesterday. And in the early portion of the race, he fell back a little bit and fell as far back as 23rd position. But as the laps clicked off, especially on the longer run early in stage number one, what I started noticing is that SVG was starting to move forward. He moved up from 23rd position up to like 22nd and 21st position before the first caution came out on lap 20 for the competition yell to check tires. And then I think he gained a few positions on pit road and moved up inside the top 20. Then on the restart, because he struggled on the restarts a little bit, he started fading back. But once again, as the run continued to progress, he started moving forward and got up to around 22nd to 21st position at the end of stage number one. Then they came down pit road at the start of stage number two and actually gained, I believe, a couple more positions on pit road and would actually restart around 16th or 17th position. But once again, their car was not set up on the short run and they started fading back once again outside of the top 20. But then they started moving forward. The car was much better on the long run and they got around to 20th to 21st position by the end of stage number two. And then at the start of stage three, after coming down pit road, they once again gained a few more positions after drivers like Chandler Smith and Haley Deegan, among other drivers like Sammy Smith as well, starting having issues, and also their teammate AJ Allmendinger, starting having issues on pit road. And then at the start of stage three, SPG was actually inside the top 20, around 16th and 17th position. But then once again, on the restart, he started fading back just a little bit. But then as the run continued on, Shane Van Gisbergen was starting to move his way back forward once again. And coming to that last couple runs especially, he was back around 23rd or 22nd position, I believe, once again. But then we get to the final few restarts. And I thought he was going to come down pit road and try to play a strategy with drivers like Park Klergerman and Chandler Smith and those guys. But for whatever reason, he didn't come down pit road. I think at that time, it would not have been a bad strategy call because likely he would have gotten back up as around the top 10, top 15 area and probably could have gotten himself a top 10. But for some reason, the call racing organization has just not been able to play the strategy calls absolutely correctly this year. And it's cost him some really, really strong performances. But it didn't really affect him completely horrendously. He kind of stayed around that top 20 area and then we get the final caution with around 25 laps to go which SVG at the time if I remember correctly was around 21st position nearly inside the top 20 we get to the final restart of the race and Shane Van Gisbergen starts moving forward and his car really comes in he passes one car then he passes another then he gets up to around 18th then passes drivers like Sammy Smith who has problems on the track then he gets up to a couple drivers. He was actually running down Anthony Alfredo at the end of the race. Gets by Jeb Burton. And he has one of the fastest cars on the racetrack coming to the end of the race. He gets up to 18th. Then he gets up to 17th. And then gets up to 16th and starts getting up into 15th position. And passes, I believe at the time, Jeb Burton or Taylor Gray, if I'm not mistaken. And starts driving his way up there. And was running Anthony Alfredo down at a pretty rapid pace. But unfortunately, he ran out of time. It was two or three tenths a lap faster near the end of the race. It was running Anthony Alfredo down. But he didn't have enough time to get up there. And is able to come across the line and finish in 15th position. For a driver who has never ran at Darlington Raceway in a car in any of the three series, and the fact he had no practice or qualifying any on-track time and was able to finish inside the top 15, I think is actually super and very, very impressive. And when you look at the call racing equipment, he was the highest finishing call racing driver today. Josh Williams finished 21st or 22nd, and we talked about Almadinger. He had a Lutch Girl and power steering issues that were affecting his car, where I think he finished 31st or 32nd position in this race. And not only that, Shane Van Gisbergen was also the second highest finishing rookie, as Jesse Love was the only driver finishing ahead of him who ran top 10 pretty much all day long. He finished 15th. Haley Deegan had her issues, and she crashed out near the end of the race, and she called out Fox Sports, which we'll talk about later in this episode, and later in the week, I should say, and we'll talk about all this stuff later. But Shane Van Gisbergen continues to impress me. He starts his race off really, really so, but as the races continue and progress, Shane Van Gisbergen continues to get better as the race progresses and goes on. And that's the most important thing. 
The goal for Shane Van Gisbergen in this year is to start off the races maybe slow, learn, not put yourself in a really tough position, but learn how to race really, really hard and more aggressively, and then be up there at the end and start pushing. He does it every single time, and he finishes a lot better than where he runs a lot of the races. But you got to finish these races and complete every lap, and that's the most important thing too. Shane Van Gisbergen is completing laps. And so far this year, I think SVG has only had three finishes outside of the top 20, which coming this year, I thought he had a lot more finishes outside of the top 20. And think about those three races. Talladega, he had basically uh, ran out of gas and I think got involved in the last wreck incident with Ryan Nelson, I remember correctly, or had some issues there. At Coda, should have won the race, was in position to win at Coda, which I think was one of the most BS calls that NASCAR has made in recent years. He finished 26th or 27th and should have absolutely finished in the top five in that race when he had probably the best car there. And then Atlanta, or not Atlanta, Las Vegas, had that issue, electrical issue, that cost him a shot at Las Vegas, maybe get a top 20 because he was starting to move forward before that issue came into play. Colin, like I said, has been struggling immensely this year, and I think he's at times been the best guy at that team. But then again, I think for a guy who's never ran at this track to once again finish inside the top 15, to me, is not only impressive, but I think it's very, very good. He got a Donaldson stripe and took the photo after the race, which I thought was really entertaining. But he spoke to the media yesterday as well, and we're going to talk about this on Monday, but he is hoping to be full-time in the Cup Series next year. And if he continues to run as good as he's been running, I would not be surprised or shocked if he's full-time with track us. We know track us is trying to pursue a third and fourth charter. There's rumors circulating the call of racing has already lost that 16 charter and it's been handed over to track us. Even rumors and rumblings that call racing's cup program could be going over to track us next year. And that could mean it's a chance and opportunity for Shane to go full-time. And you think about some of the races that are coming up for him. He's got a lot of road courses coming up. I look at Sonoma where he actually did a test earlier this week where I think he's going to be a major threat and contender at Sonoma Raceway for the win Xfinity. we got Portland coming up in a few weeks, which I'm going to be at the Gateway Race during that same weekend, which is really exciting. So if you see me at the track, come say hello. But I've been very impressed with him this year. He's been doing a really solid and good job, and I cannot wait to see what he can do going forward the rest of the year. If he continues to run like this, it wouldn't surprise or shock you by the end of the year if Shane Van Gisbergen is going out there and winning races. He's doing a really good job, and once again, to finish inside the top 15 is very, very impressive for a guy who's never been at this track. He just needs to continue progressing. He's got some races coming up here soon. He's not running the All-Star Race, unfortunately, but he's got the Co 600 and the Xfinity Series race at Charlotte. Then, of course, we've got you know Portland coming up and then Sonoma. It's going to be a really fun section of races. Chicago's coming up. I'm looking forward to that race for him. There's some very fun, awesome tracks coming up, and I think Shane Van Gisbergen just continues to get better. Once again, a top 15 run is really good, all things considered. So, that is going to be today's video on Shane Van Gisbergen. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Notifications on so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Let's go below with any comment your thoughts below on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race, on his performance here at Darlington? Let me know below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on how you think he performed today at Darlington. Tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have the NASCAR Cup Series race here from Darlington Race. We talk about drivers like Bubble Walls, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Chase Sell. He'll be competing in that race. If you're from Australia and want to tune into that race, I suggest you do it because I think Darlington is going to be really fun tomorrow. We've also got another video, news video dropping really soon as well. We'll be talking about some teams like 23 Live and Racing. Talk about some other drivers who come back like Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards. We could talk about that as well. We've got a lot of great videos dropping as we head to North Folks. So are going to be really exciting and really fun. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.